Hello, this is Vitualis the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. So today we're going to explore and learn about the England Gambit. I'm really excited about this one. It's a fantastic opening against 1d4. So d4, of course, is a great opening for white, uh, often leading to sort of closed, positional, complicated games, the sort of games I don't necessarily like defending against with black. And the England Gambit tries to scuttle all that by the immediate e5, immediately sort of asking a question of what is going to happen in the center. Now, the England Gambit is obviously spicy. It's also technically rather unsound. As you can see, it's immediately plus 1.69 uh, to, uh, to white. Now, these evaluations I calculated using Stockfish 15 with a neural network on depth 40. Uh, like it's, the interesting thing here is that on lower depths, often the ratings jump around quite a lot. So I moved them all to depth 40 for this one. The... Uh, for white to maintain their advantage, however, they must accept the gambit. So they must accept the gambit. So it's a very forcing line uh, because, you know, if they accept the gambit, well, as a person playing the gambit, you, you kind of should know what you're doing. If white chooses to not accept the gambit, then pretty much the evaluation between white and black is equal. So in basically sort of return to equality, and in some of the positions, black is even immediately ahead in the opening. So potentially very good for black. So either it goes down a line that you're familiar with, or you end up with a fairly equal game. But nonetheless, it disrupts the usual sort of 1d4 type of setups that white might be expecting. Now in this video, I'm going to first cover uh, what white might do if they don't accept the gambit. So that occurs roughly about 40% of the time. They won't accept the gambit, and there are six common moves that white might make. So I'm going to cover those first, including what we might do for black. And then I'm going to cover what we should do when white accepts the gambit, which occurs the majority of the time, about 60% of the time, uh, and, uh, and the game that I'll talk about will in fact be where white did accept the gambit. So firstly, if they don't accept the gambit, the first thing that they might do is to push the pawn to d5, which is known as declining the England gambit. That occurs roughly 13% of the time, and this is immediately good for black. As you can see, uh, when white declines the gambit, it's about minus, two, uh, minus 0 0.21, so minus 0 0.2, slightly ahead, uh, and effectively the white's pawn is a bit offside, we can now naturally develop, so either the knight or the bishop, either of those moves are fine, we continue playing chess, but we've gained an advantage in the opening, and they didn't get to play a fairly normal uh, no, uh, 1d4 type uh, setup, like the, queen, like the queen's gambit, for instance. So that's good. Now, the second most common uh, way that white may choose to not accept a gambit is where they see that, you know, we've got an aggressive attack and they try aggression on their own with a sort of immediate uh, c4, sort of queenside expansion. Uh, that occurs roughly 7% of the time. One of the themes in the England Gambit is if you're allowed to take uh, the d4 pawn, it's probably okay to do so. So in this game, so in this line, that's what you do. Take, they might take back with queen, develop knight to c6, attacking the queen. The queen now needs to move somewhere, and effectively we've gained some tempo. Um, the, you know, they've lost their d-pawn, this pawn is potentially not in quite the right place. Again, they're not going to get a fairly normal 1d4 opening. This uh, setup ends up being very equal, 0, 0, 0. Now, back here. So the opponent could attempt to defend that pawn in a number of ways. So the next most common way to not accept the gambit is to defend the pawn with the e-pawn. That occurs roughly 6% of the time. Here again, we take. They take back uh, and immediately we play d5. So basically, we now have an open e-file 
Uh, it, this is, you know, still okay for white, plus 0.18. However, with the open E file, we'll probably end up with a more open, dynamic game, uh, not like a standard D, uh, one D4 game. So it's still okay for us. That's potentially what we were looking for. So back to England Gambit. Now white can choose to defend that E pawn using the knight, with, using the knight. So the king's Oops, sorry, using the king's knight. So that occurs about, uh, let's have a look, 4% of the time. And here, uh, black is ahead. As you can see, minus 0 0.31, and basically we immediately attack the knight. So push the pawn to e4, they have to do something. Now we can again push our d pawn to d5, defending our pawn, and chess continues. Black is slightly ahead, they're sort of in a somewhat cramped, uncomfortable position, and we're doing fine. Chess continues. Back to the England Gambit. Now they can defend that pawn, potentially with the C pawn. So this also occurs roughly 4% of the time. Now this is a 0, 0, 0, so balanced game, and here um, there's less for us to do other than push the pawn to E. Four. But again, in this position, the opponent's not really necessarily getting a, a standard 1d4 type opening. Again, we're happy days. Uh, chess continues. Now, the last way uh, that the opponent can aim to decline the, um, the England Gambit is to transpose it into the center game. So that occurs uncommonly about 2% of the time, and here you play it as if it were a center game. Capture, I've got a whole video on how to play against the center game, might be worth a look. Uh, here, um, again, it's basically 0, 0, 0 uh, with the center game. All right. So as mentioned, uh, the most common way that white will play this is to accept the, uh, the England Gambit. And that's what we're going to look at next, is the England Gambit accepted. But before we do that, let's have a look actually at the review. So the actual game that I played, a uh, very short game, only eight moves before my opponent resigned. And this is a sort of a similar sort of, uh, sort of I suppose a, a pattern that you hope to see. So the England Gambit, of course, as I said, is a little bit dubious. So, you know, white is technically ahead, but the shenanigans with the Gambit leads to the opponent making mistakes and you rapidly gain a massive advantage at the end. All right, so the England Gambit accepted. Now here, there are basically two lines uh, that you can potentially take. So the first, uh, I'll talk about the first, which is a sort of super spicy line, which I don't recommend, which is the immediately gambit another pawn with d6. Uh, and the logic here is that you're hoping for the opponent to take, uh, then you sort of take back with bishop, and now your three diagonal pieces, so your bishop pair and the queen, all have open diagonals facing the opponent's king side, and you want to launch a super rapid aggressive attack. So that's the basic idea. Uh, this is, a, is the Charlick Gambit. Uh, Charlick is uh, named after the second Australian chess champion, actually, so you know, quite quite fond of uh, it being called the Charlick Gambit, also known as the Hartlob Charlick Gambit. Um, fairly dubious, you know, plus 1.8, but you know, you've really opened up the lines and uh, yeah, people do do potentially okay. Uh, if you look at sort of the Lee Chess database, it's actually pretty close. Black and white win approximately equally. So it's a little bit too sort of uh, too spicy for my taste, I think. Uh, so I prefer to play perhaps the main line, which is to immediately attack that pawn with knight to c6. Now here, the opponent will either develop their knight or their bishop to defend that pawn. So whichever one they play, you next play queen to e7 to place yet another attacker on the pawn. So what uh, this might look like, as happened in the game that I played, they played bishop first, queen to e7, then they played the knight, so either of those you know, order doesn't matter because you end up in the same position. Uh, and here is the beginning of some very, very nasty moves by black. Now, the interesting thing about the England Gambit, it's named after Fritz England, a uh, Swede, and, and he didn't actually develop this opening. It was developed by a Latvian, Carlos, uh, Carlos Betinch. 
Uh, he also developed the Latvian Gambit, actually. However, England uh, liked this Gambit so much, he actually hosted a tournament where everyone had to play this opening. And, and soon after the tournament, he died. <laughs> and so, uh, with you know, the news of reporting this as England's Gambit tournament, the name of the England Gambit just stuck. Now, what should we do here? The next move is a very, very, you know, provocative queen to b4, comes with check, also forking the pawn on b2, and the bishop on f4. So, here is where I think white will often make a mistake. Uh, and even if they play the best move, it's easy to make a mistake. So the best move for white is to play bishop two back to d2, counterattacking the queen, uh, and also, you know, obviously the, you don't want the bishop to be hanging. Here, it's quite okay for the queen to take the pawn on b2, and very commonly now, the sort of the most sensible looking move for white is to play bishop to c3. And, you know, it looks like a sensible move, right? Because that bishop is defended by the knight, the bishop attacks the queen and provides x-ray defense to the rook. So this looks like it's going to be a really good move, and maybe even the queen's going to get trapped. However, this is a blunder, uh, a straight-up blunder, minus 7.56, minus 7. And the reason for that is that we now have this wonderful move, bishop to b4, pinning that bishop to the, to the king, and, and basically we're doing really, really well. Uh, so, you know, there's still a little bit of trickiness uh, here, obviously, uh, but basically you're going to be winning material. You do have to play carefully, but you're winning material, minus 7.5, basically, you're done. That is not an uncommon thing. And this is from a line where the opponent plays the best move. Remember, this is the best response for white. Now, in the actual game, my opponent didn't play the best response. They played knight to c3 to block the check. And of course, that hangs the bishop. Uh, let's put on the feedback. Uh, now, here I take the bishop, and you'll notice that it's still fairly balanced, and for it to be balanced, the opponent needed to see knight to d5 with a sort of fork of the queen and my c7 pawn. That's what they needed to see. Uh, however, they didn't see that. They tried to attack my, uh, my queen. Uh, so you can see, so minus 3.2, queen back, uh, all the way to b4. Uh, they sort of try to develop. Well, you know, that pawn is hanging, it's still hanging now, minus four. Uh, they try to attack the queen, uh, however, <laughs> not recognizing they hung their knight, minus ten and a half, and in this point, my opponent opted to resign uh, on move, oh, move nine. So this is, you know, the venom that can occur with the England Gambit, where, you know, my opponent was hoping for maybe a more positional uh, close game of 1d4. Good game, GG. My big takeaway from this game is that the England Gambit is an effective way to respond to 1d4, at least at the beginner-intermediate level. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.